Hello everyone. Today I'm going to answer your burning question. Does Isolde need spathodia? And I think to answer this question, we need to first understand Isolde's kit, followed by understanding Spathodia's kit. And then I will reveal a showcase. And this showcase is not just any showcase. I'm going to showcase a poison team versus a burn team. And I think you will find the results very surprising. First, let's go ahead and talk about Isolde's kit. So Isolde's uh, Swirling Humming Incantation is a mass attack that deals 150% reality damage to two targets and inflicts two stacks of burn on them. When in interlude status, the penetration rate of this attack increases by 30%. When in finale status, the penetration rate of this attack is increased by 50%. There's a lot going on here, so I'll go ahead and dissect a few things. So you'll first notice that there's two different statuses, interlude status and finale status. Well, uh, Isolde has three different statuses. She has the prelude status, which she starts off with in battle. And when you inflict burn stacks on the enemy, which she does with this debuff, and the burn stacks disappear from the enemy, the amount of burn stacks that disappear converts into heat stacks that are applied as a buff stack, basically a stack on herself. So she'll gain a heat stack. When she gets 15 stacks of heat on her, on her, then she will convert from, she will transition from prelude status to interlude status. And by being an interlude status, it allows this attack incantation to hit harder by bypassing 30% of their defenses. And then when at I3, if you have an I3 E sold, if she has 40 stacks of heat from all those burn stacks disappearing, right? Then she will enter, she will transition from interlude status to finale status. And this is what allows her to bypass 50% of the enemy's defenses with this attack. So that's what this is referring to. And the way burn works is that uh, in addition to them healing less, whoever is burned, at the end of each round, the stacks of burn that will cause the target to affected to suffer damage equal to a percentage of their own attack. And then after each round ends, half of the burn stacks will, dis will be consumed. Multiple stacks of burn are considered as one negative status. So uh, that's an important clause right there. Half of the burn stacks are consumed and those burn stacks that are consumed will be converted to heat stacks that apply on Isolde and allows her to transition from the prelude to interlude, from the interlude to finale status. Now this next debuff, Freedom of Will, it's a mass debuff that is akin to like Beacorn Bloom's debuff or Shemaine's debuff, but with a twist. Uh, you basically shred crit defense as well as reality defense. And if the enemy has burn, which they most definitely will at all times, the reality defense uh, increases even more. Uh, a reality defense shred increases even more. So this is interesting because it doesn't increase your chance of doing crit. It just makes it so that when you do crit, you crit harder. And for this reason, it makes it so that you really want to pair Isolde with Tooth Fairy or some sort of defense who can take advantage of the crit defense shred. And this is where I would present my first counter argument to why um, Isolde really needs um, Spathodea or yeah, because like some people are capping saying that, oh, Isolde's great with everyone. But the thing is that not every DPS can take full advantage of the crit defense shred. I think people are forgetting that you're not always going to pair Isolde with Tooth Fairy. I mean, yes, if you're pairing Isolde with Tooth Fairy, then of course, yeah, your, DP your DPSs are going to crit more. And yes, they will take advantage of the crit defense. But 
you're not always going to have that situation. Like maybe someday in the future, you will have a burn applicating healer, kind of like Sothebi, right? Like the burn version of Sothebi that does not, you know, increase your crit rate. So if that ever happens, do you think that, uh, you know, having a DPS that doesn't buff their own crit chance, like, uh, like Joe is going to take full advantage of that first crit defense shred clause? I don't think so. And so um, I think that people, yeah, I kind of get what they're saying about Isold not needing uh, Spathodea, but Spathodea, which we'll go over later, she, for her inside one, whenever she punches an enemy that has a burn stack, her crit rate, her subsequent crit rate increases by 25%. So she has the ability to increase her own crit rate, whereas other DPSs like Joe cannot. All right, and then moving on to her ultimate, this is really cool. So um, Isolde, when she casts her ultimate, it is a mass debuff, inflicts five stacks of burn on all enemies, and an additional five stacks of burn on the main target. Uh, gives one stack of rousing morale to all allies, quite good. Uh, rousing morale is basically like the restless heart uh, of Regulus, but applied to all your party members, in which their subsequent uh, damage dealing attack deals an additional 50% damage, which is insane. Casts Intermezzo as well, and Intermezzo deals 50% reality, reality damage. If the target is afflicted by burn, each stack of burn will cause an additional 10% reality damage. So this is another incentive to having a dedicated burn applicator such as Spathodea. Spathodea basically further fuels two parts of Isolde's kit that we've seen so far. It feels, fuels her Isolde's ability to more quickly enter the interlude and finale status, which allows her to bypass more enemy defenses via penetration rate, increased penetration rate. And then Intermezzo is another, it's a follow-up attack that Isolde does uh, that after she casts her ultimate, that deals additional reality damage for each set, each stack, not just a stack, each stack of burn. So this is, it incentivizes you to have a burn DPS or another burn support to fully activate the entirety of Isolde's kit. Uh, and then when you look at the inside one, like I mentioned before, when starting battle, she enters the prelude status. That's her initial status. Inflicts three stacks of burn on all enemies. So right off the bat, you know, when you you read all of this, you notice how many ways she can inflict burn, right? She can inflict burn with the, um, the attack debuff incantation, right? The four stacks, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, not that one, sorry. Um, Oh, I'm sorry, two stacks on each of those two targets. Okay, so four stacks total. Four stacks of burn, that's one way to do it. Five stacks of burn on each target with five on all enemies with five additional. So her ultimate applies burn. And then when she enters battle, she applies burn. This is like a match made in heaven for Spathodia and Isold. True, Isold is probably empowering Spathodia a lot more than Spathodia empowers Isolde. But the thing is that that's what a support is supposed to do, right? A support is supposed to support the DPS. You don't see that often the DPS supporting the, the support. But in this case, Spathodia does, and I will go over that in a moment. Um, when the enemy with the highest amount of burn resolves and loses stacks, gains the same number of heat as the lost amount of burn. So this was what I was talking about with the heat stacks. So um, basically, whenever the enemy cools down, quote unquote, uh, the main target specifically, or I guess the one with the highest amount of burn specifically, she will gain the cor corresponding same number of stacks of heat. And when 
heat reaches 15, when it reaches 15, she enters the interlude status. And this is what allows her to have the 30% penetration rate from her incantation. And then uh, seven veils, the inside three, when heat reaches 40, which is a pretty tough feat that um, it certainly, she can enable it by herself, but, but Spathodia accelerates this process. When Isold reaches a heat stack of 40, her interlude turns to finale, finale and this is where you get the 50% penetration rate. Now, with all that in mind, we go over Spathodia, and this is where we tie in the knot for uh, my argument that Isold needs Spathodia, and Spathodia, of course, there's no discussion, really needs Isold. Um, so for Spathodia, she applies a self-buff that grants three stacks of pre-ignition. The higher level the buff, the more pre-ignition stacks you can apply. Pre-ignition is important because this is how she applies stacks of burn. If you have three stacks of pre-ignition, one punch will deal three stacks of burn, six to six, nine to nine. Exhilaration basically allows her to, when she crits, to hit harder. And then precast ignition point one. This is what allows you to generate an ignition point incantation. Uh, the yeah the little boxer incantation of the following at the beginning of the next round and then little boxer this is the incantation that can be generated from the buff it doesn't actually cast the buff it just uh, it doesn't cast I'm sorry it doesn't cast this incantation the buff it just generates the incantation and you still need to use an action to cast the, this incantation so Little Boxer, it uh, is a one single target attack that deals reality damage. If she is in the pre-ignition state, which she most definitely will be after you cast the buff, then her crit, the crit damage of this attack will be increased by a lot, 40%. That's a lot. Uh, and then finally, the ultimate. So it does single target high reality damage. The crit damage of this attack, this ultimate, is increased by 40%. And when you have 15 stacks or more of burn on that target, when you hit them with the ultimate, this ultimate has their crit damage increased by an additional 40%. So 80% crit, uh, crit damage. And so this incentivizes you to have a burn applicator like Ulu, or Isold because this allows her to hit that magic number of 15 uh, you know when when she casts her ultimate but the thing is keep in mind at the end of each turn the burn stacks are basically disappearing uh, by half and so for this reason you want to have at least two applicator two applicators of burn that way Whenever you have Spathodia's ultimate ready, you pretty much will have the 15 stack minimum criteria to appreciate the additional 40% crit damage. And then Insight 1 is what allows Spathodia to have additional synergy with your easel because when an attack inflicts burn status, which she will, right, when she punches well, after she does the buff with pre-ignition status on her, then she will inflict burn on the enemy. So when she inflicts a burn status, uh, the next attack by Spathodia will have a crit rate increase by 25%. And this is a big deal because not only will she hit harder when, um, or sh crit more, more frequently, but when she does land a crit hit when under Insight 3, four stacks of burn will be inflicted on the target. And this is where, you know, the synergy really, you can you can see it, it's so noticeable because you have three different ways that Isold can apply burn stacks onto not just one enemy, but multiple enemies at a time. And then you have uh, Spathodia, even though she's inflicting burn stacks only on a single target, but she is hitting really hard and fully utilizing everything that Isold has to offer. 
So if you ask me, does ESOL need Spathodea? I would say yes if you want to enable ESOL's kit to the fullest potential. If hypothetically you were to pair her up with any DPS like Joe or I don't know what other DPS like Centurion or Melania, that sort of thing, like some content creators are, are saying, they're not going to be able to appreciate fully Isolde's kit because yeah, when they crit, they crit harder, but they won't crit more without the help of someone else like Tooth Fairy. Not to mention, the DPSs are not utilizing the burn stacks for additional damage that Isolde provides. Not to mention, they're not contributing to Isolde's damage output. Uh, and so, you know, that's okay if you believe that Esol's damage is negligible, negligible. But, you know, all that cumul cumulative damage can be the difference between like a six turn clear to a seven turn or eight turn clear, you know, because I think, of course, you want to enable the DPS's output damage output to the fullest potential but having a sub dps like you know what we see in our charlie team with regulus or say like mm, like a pickles team with melania having a support who can deal decent damage with minimal effort is a big deal it does matter uh, and so this is how i feel i think Isold and Spathodea are two peas in a pod. And now I will show you the showcase between my P5 poison team versus a CN player's burn team. Enjoy. Confrontation was never to my liking. Right. Music will speak. The Bagua drown on the sign break never warns about its changes.
It is here. That's right. The bones will tell. Tu peux la jeter, mettez-moi. La charme de peur. This is not a mistake made by men. The curtain has fallen. <laughs> 